first medical channel with corroboration of Picture Medicine channel, we will teach you all about constipation, including what causes it and how to stop it. We will also teach you about the different types of constipation and how to tell if you have it. Subscribe for helpful health tips, learn about other medical conditions and a little medical humor you don't ever see on TV. Or your healthcare provider's office. Hello. Today we are going to talk about constipation. Constipation is a very common problem, especially in the modern world, because of our eating habits, because of less fluid intake, because of less physical activity. First of all, we will discuss uh, the term constipation. So, we need to, t uh, we need to uh, take in mind that constipation uh, is actually only a symptom. It is not a disease. So, it is a symptom and not a disease. So, we always need to find out what is the underlying cause of uh, constipation. There is also an, an, another term that we need to discuss, and that is obstipation. And these terms are uh, similar, but they are actually very different. In constipation, people have difficulty passing the stool, uh, maybe less frequent, maybe difficult to expel hard stools, incomplete evacuation, and so on. But in obstipation, there is uh, actually no uh, passing of stool and no passing of gases. In constipation, there is always at least some passing of gas. But in obstipation, there will be no gas. And this is a more severe term, a more severe a problem than constipation. Uh, so, constipation, what the, is its definition? So, it is defined as less than three stools in a week. So, in seven days, we have less than three stools. But the definition is more complicated than this. There can be people that have five to six stools, but they are uh, hard stools. The, they feel a uh, incomplete evacuation after the toilet, they have abdominal bloating, they have difficulty expelling the stool, they feel a fullness in their tummy, and uh, all that uh, are criteria when we have those patients that are considered constipation. So constipation is a symptom that has, uh, it is very subjective, uh, but all these complaints together uh, can constitute that we uh, diagnose that the patient has uh, constipation and a problem with stool evacuation. So, uh, how are we going to tackle this problem? First, uh, constipation can be divided in primary. So, in this case, this is our gut, the small and the large intestine, the rectum and the anus. So, uh, this is a normal physiological, uh, anatomically and physiologically a normal gut. But if the patient has uh, problems and constipation and his, there is no underlying cause, that is uh, thought as primary constipation. So we will just put it like this. So primary constipation, or it is also called functional constipation. More than 90% of the cases of uh, constipation are actually uh, this type of constipation. And that, that is good for us because this is easily solvable. Most cases of constipation are, pro are actually problems with uh, the diet. So a low fiber intake, a low hydration, a low activity, sedentary lifestyle can easily lead to constipation, but it is easily solvable with taking 
uh, veggies, uh, taking more uh, fluids and doing uh, a little amount of regular exercise and there will be no constipation. But there is also a second issue that we need to address and that is secondary constipation. As the name says, so secondary constipation There is an underlying cause, and the constipation is a secondary symptom of it. The constipation as an underlying cause that has an underlying cause, it has many causes. I only put here uh, the most frequent ones. So we will start from the uh, anal region problems. For example, here we see that there is a tear in the uh, in the region of the anus. So this tear is actually called an anal fissure. This is one of the problems. Why do patients with anal fissures develop constipation? Because when they pass stool, they irritate this fissure and they have pain. Because of this pain, they avoid going to the toilet. So because of that, they develop constipation. Also, here we have, uh, these are hemorrhoids, so these are internal hemorrhoids that are in the anus, and when they are uh, out of the uh, anus, I will just say like that, when you can see them, they are external hemorrhoids. So they, these are internal, and these are external hemorrhoids. Internal hemorrhoids do not cause most of the time pain, but external are painful. So. As in the anal fissures, hemorrhoidal disease which is also fairly common because of the sedentary lifestyle uh, causes pain when the stool passes and then the patients avoid uh, going to the bath and then they uh, have constipation. Then we have uh, problems with uh, obstruction. So one reason then are, we can have problems with uh, obstruction in the gut so if it is a part of our bowels we see that here is a mass this is obviously a tumor it is not important if the tumor is uh, benign or uh, oh, it is important but the important thing is that there is a mass that is obstructing the normal evacuation uh, of the stool through the anus. And this obstruction obviously leads to constipation and problems with stool evacuation. Uh, of course, there will be other signs, like in all of these other uh, uh, causes, but constipation is just a symptom in this secondary constipation of an underlying problem. So tumors and strictures and other problems that uh, cause the normal gut anatomy to change can cause obstruction and then a symptom that is constipation. Then we have another interesting cause uh, and that is uh, irritable bowel disease. So irritable bowel uh, syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome is actually uh, an interesting disease that has... Uh, in constipation, that is primary, we don't have pain. And in the irritable bowel syndrome, we have many symptoms. But there is a form of irritable bowel syndrome that is called irritable bowel syndrome that is dominantly, uh, that the, where the dominant symptom is constipation. There are other symptoms, but constipation is one that is dominant. So it is also important that, to know that with, there is uh, a very similar disease to primary constipation. Then, a very, very important cause uh, of constipation, uh, medication. So, there are many, many different medications that can give uh, problems with constipation. For example, calcium uh, channel blockers, uh, many antidepressive medicine, and, of course, a big, big group uh, 
opioid uh, uh, opioid medicines so they will definitely if they're taken for a longer time they will definitely give con uh, problems with uh, stool evacuation and they, they will definitely have a problem these patients with constipation also patients that abuse opioids they always have some laxatives with them then we have many endocrine problems I uh, put here the thyroid gland so hypo the dysfunction where we have the loss of the function of the thyroid gland so hypotyrosis uh, hypotyrosis can also uh, give constipation as one of the sim uh, symptoms of uh, the dysfunction of the thyroid for example that is one option then we have neurological uh, diseases that often can give uh, problems and there are many of these diseases so in neurology we have many diseases like parkinson's like multiple sclerosis uh, there are also a muscle, uh, muscle atrophy diseases that all can give problems with uh, uh, stool evacuation and can cause constipation and in the end obstipation so constipation can lead to obstipation uh, there are also psychiatric uh, diseases so uh, like depression people that have depression will be using antidepressive medicine and that is one option but also because of the disease itself they can uh, uh, have a problem like, uh, like constipation then food disorders where pe who doesn't take food in will have no uh, stool that is a, a no-brainer so basically uh, this is an overview and it is good for us that most of the causes of constipation are actually primary and easily solvable with a change in a diet where we take more fiber uh, and we, where we, where we uh, hydrate uh, better and uh, where we do more activity. When there are, so when a patient comes in and we do an uh, anamnesis, when we do a clinical examination, those are a must. And if we, are no, uh, if we don't find an underlying cause, we definitely do this therapy and in most of the cases it will solve the problem. But if we find there is a bloody stool, there is a weight loss, there are other symptoms that can be... Um, uh, uh, thought to be problems with the thyroid some Parkinson problems and so on there will be other symptoms uh, besides constipation we need to do more diagnostics and probably consult uh, more uh, colleagues to see what is actually the secondary the primary cause of the secondary constipation it is very important for people that have constipation and that have also a bloody stool and especially if they have weight loss and anemia and especially if they are older um, older than 40 years so in those patients it, it will be also a no-brainer to do more diagnostics especially colonoscopy so in order to recap this it is good for us that most constipation actually arises from our lifestyle and our lifestyle problems and it is easily solvable but there are also many secondary causes and I have not addressed all of them there is also colonoparesis problems with um, the on the anal floor uh, muscles and all of those causes anal fissures uh, different benign and chronic tumors uh, different uh, diseases in the uh, GI tract, uh, systemic diseases and so on, all of them can cause constipation. But in those cases, constipation is only a secondary, a secondary symptom of an underlying cause. Thank you.